Hello everyone, my name is Vanessa Falloy. I am the Chief Trainer at AMP Global Youth. Thank you so, 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 so much for tuning in from wherever you are. Um, we are going to be talking about Global Scholar today, which is our flagship training program for young change makers all around the world to come to Washington DC to learn about international affairs, social justice and global citizenship. But before we get into all of that, very quickly, I just want to share a little bit about who I am. So my name is Vanessa. I am a social impact educator. So I travel the world working with different organizations to serve the learning of change makers in making a difference in this world. And when I say difference, I mean a real difference. How can we affect social change? So I have been working with AMP for a number of years now. Before that, I studied international affairs, sorry, international relations and Spanish as a double honours bachelor's degree in the UK. And then I went on to get a postgraduate in social enterprise and innovation, and that was in Germany. So as I mentioned, I have been working with AMP for a number of years now, and it is one of my favourite things to do. Um, and yes, Global Scholar, our training programme for young change makers. Um, Global Scholar is a leadership incubator for high school students coming to DC, as I said, to learn about how to make a difference. It has been running for a number of years. So actually, before we even get into it, massive shout out to Karen Showalter, who is our program director and helps to manage all things Global Scholar and AMP Global Youth. Um, it has been running for a number of years now, and we are so excited to be bringing it back for 2018. Um, before I get into the curriculum, just a couple of key points about the program in and of itself. So first of all, it runs during the month of July. It, uh, we have three different sessions, okay? So listen carefully. The first session is for juniors and seniors, and it runs from the 1st of July to the 13th of July. Then we have our second session, which is also for juniors and seniors, but is in the final part of July, the second half, if you like. And that is from the 15th to the 27th of July. And then we have our third session, which we launched last year, and it's for a slightly younger cohort. So if you are a freshman or a sophomore, you are welcome to apply. And it's for a slightly shorter time with us. It's from the 15th of July to the 21st of July. So there you go. Those are the three different sessions that we have. As you've probably worked out, um, the first two sessions, so the sessions for the juniors and seniors, are just under two weeks, and the third and final session for freshmen and sophomores is just under a week. Um, anything else to say? Yeah, we are accepting applications, which is a really exciting time for us. So if you are a high school student through grades 9 to 12, you can come from anywhere in the world and come to DC to learn about all things global change, um, then yeah, please apply. We also have partial scholarships available. So we really, really hope that finances, that money is never a barrier of entry or access to any of our training programs. So if you do feel like you need some financial assistance, absolutely fine, get in touch. We are so, so happy to try and extend and offer our partial scholarships for students who come from um, more underprivileged backgrounds, we could say. But yes, do get in touch if you have any questions. Feel free to type them as we get through this live session. Um, but you can also get in touch with me at Vanessa F at AIDemocracy.org. And you should probably be able to see it don't know which side it is. You should probably be able to see it in the blurb to the side of this session. Um, for more information, I'm really, really happy to answer any of your questions and really, really, really excited to be seeing you this July for all things international affairs, social justice and global citizenship. Cool. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about the curriculum and then we'll get into everything else, all of the other fun and um, yeah, fun and exciting bits afterwards. So as I mentioned in the beginning, Global Scholar is a leadership incubator for high school students. Okay, our curricula spans international affairs, social justice and global citizenship. We should be getting that by now. I've mentioned it a couple of times. Great. In terms of our curricula, 
it's really important to think about our curricula in the plural, right? So we can think about different components that come together to make up what is the global scholar curriculum. OK, so the first piece or branch of our curriculum that we're going to talk about is the international affairs branch. Right. Great. So the international affairs branch of the curriculum is a really, really exciting part. I mean, it's all exciting, um, but this really is part of the curriculum where you're going to be learning about like current affairs international affairs, like what's going on in the world, geopolitically, um, socially, economically, historically, all of those things in like coming into one, like what is happening on the global stage. With this part of the curriculum, it's made up of seminars and panel discussions. OK, so we visit different organizational HQs, that's headquarters, different headquarters of globally renowned and recognized institutions and organizations in Washington, D.C. So these include um, in past years, Save the Children, United Nations Foundation, the Pew Research Center, the Aspen Institute and the World Bank, just to pick out a few. OK, so we go and we are hosted by these organizations where we will attend a panel discussion event or seminar where we invite a range of experts in their field to come and discuss a global challenge in the 21st century. So in terms of what these global challenges or topics, if you like, of each panel discussion, in terms of what they are and what they look like, we do have a range of kind of common uh, reoccurring themes that come out quite a lot, okay? But I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. So the kind of topics that we talk about with our international affairs curriculum and in these panel discussions, we have global security, we have migration, we have human rights, we have youth development, we have human rights as well, um, and environmentalism. I think that's for the most part, all of them. I might have repeated myself on one. Um, those are the kinds of topics that um, that we have, uh, that we talk about during the panel discussions, okay? To go into a bit more detail, global security might look like geopolitics, for example. Um, it might look like biochemical warfare. Um, it could also intersect with other subject matters or, or panel discussions. So, for example, migration or environmentalism and climate change. How do, the, how do those affect global security? So that's global security. Migration, um, so refugees and, and migrants, um, global movements, uh, what is happening on the local, national and international stage in terms of policy around um, migration. Um, so that's quite self-explanatory. Um, we have youth development, so this can be health, education, um, employment. Uh, we have uh, human rights, which can obviously divide into a number of subcategories. So women and girls, um, LGBTQIA+, disability rights, etc. Um, what else do we have? I always forget a few. Um, then we have, wait for it, it's coming, environmentalism, so climate change, essentially. Um, and I think I've missed out one more, but that's okay. You get the general picture. So um, in terms of last year, our Global Scholar favorite was actually global security. And uh, we talked a lot about Asia. So we talked about geopolitics between the United States and, and other geopolitical players like China or North Korea, for example. Um, so it was really, really interesting and was actually the favorite amongst our Global Scholar cohort. Um, so we invite three to five experts in their field to come and debate and discuss global challenges that I've already listed, okay? These experts can include politicians, policymakers, ambassadors, NGO professionals, think tank researchers, um, a, a whole plethora of experts who come and debate and discuss the issue at hand. Our sessions in terms of the panel discussion or seminar usually tend to last about 90 minutes and about 60 minutes of those is spent on kind of hard talk on our experts presenting not only themselves and what they do, their profession, but also analyzing trends in terms of their, their field or, or global trends as well. What are the obstacles and or the opportunities, um, the threats, the challenges that they're seeing um, into, on a global, um, on, in a global context um, related to international affairs. 
So it's about 60 minutes on that. There will obviously be time for questions and answers, no problem at all. Um, but then we try and save an extra 30 minutes um, tagged on to the end of each panel discussion where you can go and ask individual and specific questions to each expert um, or to, to whichever expert that, that is appropriate for you. Um, and you can go and ask them about career advice. So for example, how do I get an internship at your organization? What are the things I can do if I want to follow your career path and also be an ambassador or work at the UN, for example? Um, all of those kind of questions, there is one-on-one, -on -one, a bit of networking time for you to be able to go and find out. You can shake hands, exchange business cards, that kind of thing. We really try and protect that 30 minute time window for you to be able to have some one-on-one -on -one contact time with our program experts. Um, and then after each, um, after each session, we also try and do uh, what we call our debrief um, discussions, where we try and distill and crystallize the learnings that we've got from the panel discussion slash seminar. So this means trying to delve a bit deeper into the complexity of the issue and also trying to figure out the connectivity between the different global challenges. So what is the connection between um, global security and food and hunger and climate change and migration flows, right? So we really try and distill that learning and start to, to build and map out a global picture of what is going on in current affairs as we see it today. Um, is there anything else that I need to add? Not really, just to say that it's a really fantastic opportunity to be able to meet with um, policymakers and, and politicians and people that we hold accountable, or also researchers and consultants, people that sometimes we might feel a little bit intimidated by um, or that we might not have access to. It's such a golden opportunity to be able to actually meet them one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, and to ask those questions that you're burning to ask. And just to say, our program experts are people, they're human beings, they're super friendly, and they really want to be able to answer your questions and also hear from you because young people, you are intelligent, you are active, you are doing things. And it's so important to establish that connection and contact that sometimes might go a bit amiss um, between you know, uh, professionals and experts who are constantly out in the field. It's also their opportunity to hear from you and understand how you see the world as well. So the International Affairs Curriculum is fantastic, okay? You're going to learn so, so much. And if you want to know more, um, you can go to our website, globalscholar.org. And underneath, I think in, in if you select uh, um, the, the tab that's called A Day in the Life of Global Scholar, at the bottom, there is a video from our Global Scholar Advisory Board, um, who are our alumni network. And they're talking a lot about you know tips and tricks, but also things that they really enjoy from the International Affairs Curriculum as well. So you can get a better picture from the people who have actually done the program themselves. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to keep marching on. Next part of the curriculum, our second branch, if you like, is the social justice branch, which is my personal favorite because it is my uh, part of the curriculum that I lead. Okay, so the social justice um, curriculum is also called the AMP Action Lab. Okay, the AMP Action Lab. All right. In terms of this curriculum, it is made up of hands-on, highly participatory workshops where we get involved, we're on our feet, we're doing stuff. And then we are crystallizing the learning by having deep conversations about it afterwards. I'll explain a little bit about that in a second. So they are um, held um, at the American University campus. And I should say, actually, obviously, Global Scholar is a residential program. And um, so we are based at the American University campus. There is the commuter option available as well. So for all of you who are living in the District of Columbia, massive shout out to DC. Um, you can also attend Global Scholar, but just um, go for the commuter option and it's a bit cheaper. But we are housed in the um, American University uh, residence um, on campus, and it is here that we have the workshops for the Action Lab. 
okay? So whereas with the international affairs side of the curriculum, we go out to different organizations in Washington, D.C., and they host us, so we're traveling. Um, with the AMP Action Lab, we are having it in different spaces um, across campus, which is a really nice way of kind of enjoying campus life a little bit, you know, seeing what is it like to, to be a college student. Um, and also American University campus is a beautiful campus as well. It's really, really lovely. Um, and it's great to kind of see all the different spaces and types of classrooms that they have. And so that's where we host the Action Lab, the AMP Action Lab. Now, we have a range of social justice modules um, that we do across the, the time that we spend together. So we have systems thinking, aka also known as complex problem solving. We have diversity and inclusion. We have social entrepreneurship and innovation. We have campaign building, strategic communications, arts and advocacy, ethics and leadership. Um, and we have some bonus modules also coming up this year that I'll talk about, if hopefully I'll remember to talk about in a little bit. But those are the kinds of modules that we have. Okay, and all of these modules are skill builders. They are to build your actionable, tangible skills in change making. So you will come into the Action Lab, maybe with an idea of um, what you want to create, uh, like what your area of interest is in terms of social change, um, what is an issue that really resonates with you that you're really passionate about. And hopefully you will come out of the Action Lab with the skills that you need to design and deliver a social action project that you can take back to launch on your school campus and in your communities. Okay, so th the Action Lab is really about taking action it's about building those skills okay so we will be on our feet and we will be doing learning by doing and that's what the action lab is all about it's not about sitting and taking notes that happens too that happens too as well um but it is about actually learning by doing so yeah, all of these kind of skill building modules to get you um, to uh, a level where you are able to design and deliver a social action project that you can take back and wow your community with in terms of your change making power. Um, what else is there to say about the Action Lab? Last year, in to give some examples about the kinds of um, the kinds of social action projects we had last year, we had some groups, um, and they, for example, there was a um, there was a small group that did their social action project on um, food waste. Okay, so food waste, which was connected um, to food and hunger as a, as an international affairs issue. That we, that we kind of see and talk about in our international affairs curriculum. So we're seeing kind of all of the different connections and how the program comes together as a whole. So that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to address food waste. We had another group who did um, solar energy. So trying to lobby their university, their college management to um, install solar panels on the roofs of universities because obviously universities have loads of buildings, loads of roof space. What better place than to put solar panels there and to actually try and run a, uh, a sustainable and energy efficient and sustainable campus of solar energy. Um, so that was another project. And then another one was in net neutrality. So the issue of repealing net neutrality, if you don't know and you live in the US, then you should definitely know about it. Global youth, 100%. It is a very important issue. Net neutrality, find out what it is. Um, so this project was an educational project for young people for exactly this reason, for young people to know more about what is net neutrality and the repeal that's currently um, taking place in, in the United States of America. And um, it was a great project. We had videos, we had letters to senators and representatives. Um, we had social media pages set up. We had a crowdfunder, all kinds of things that you're going to come and do together um, as a small group and team to be able to launch your project. So you will walk out of the Action Lab with a campaign that you want to take, that hopefully you want to take forward and that hopefully we can also launch on the AMP Global Youth platform as well. Cool. I think that's almost everything in terms of the uh, AMP Action Lab. Just trying to think. Yeah, I think we're good to go. So 
Those are the two different branches, the main branches, if you like, of our curricular program. We also have some extra kind of um, modules or, or subcomponents, if you like. So we have our global citizenship module, and this um, has a couple of different facets to it, a couple of different um, pieces to this. So we have uh, what we like, how we like to kick off the whole program is we have our partner, um, our program lecturer come in, um, who teaches at the University of Maryland, come and give a session on the, um, historical social change movements and the history of global citizenship. And that's a really good way to kind of launch the whole program and, and to build that foundational understanding of what global citizenship and, and what a, a social movement is, right? Um, then we have, as well, as part of the global citizenship um, module, we also have um, some critical thinking um, sessions about what does it mean to be a global citizen, what doesn't it mean to be a global citizen, and um, these can be quite challenging and quite tough because it's really about challenging our perceptions about ways that we can help the world and ways that we think we're helping the world, but maybe we're not actually. Um, so it's a great module, um, so watch out for that. We also have our career development module, which is, again, a massive favorite amongst the global scholars of last year, of last summer. So the career development module looks a little bit like this. We have a panel discussion event, which is hosted by our program partner, Axia, which is the Association of Professional Schools in International Affairs. Um, and we, are, we attend a panel discussion where there are invited professionals to come and discuss their career path. So to come and um, share with you, global scholars, how they got to where they are. Okay, in terms of their career development. Uh, it's not always the most conventional path. M many times it's unexpected and it's, it's a winding, meandering, um, sometimes spontaneous, sometimes serendipitous ways of, of suddenly finding yourself in one career or another. Um, and that's really the fun of the career development panel is that there's no conventional or, or best practice, right? It's all about sharing stories and, and there are tips and tricks to market yourselves as future employees um, that um, the employers want to hear about. So we have that career development panel. In terms of the kind of professionals that we invite, we have um, NGO professionals, we have heads of faculty. So last year we had the head of faculty of the School of International Studies, which is based at the American University. So for those of you that are interested in studying at the American University, Global Scholar is a fantastic opportunity to come and test it out to add something to your resume as well, in terms of your already kind of um, existing interest in coming to the university. Um, and to, to kind of see what it's all about, what, what's campus like, what, what, what is there to offer, um, especially with the faculty of uh, the School of International Studies. So last year we had the head of faculty come and share things um, alike, the challenges of being a student, perhaps financial constraints, um, getting funding, what um, does a good college application look like, um, kind of along with that we also have admissions officers as well, um, we have entrepreneurs, uh, we have past Peace Corps volunteers coming and talking about how to market your volunteering uh, or second language or international experience um, on your resume, um, because it's one thing to build skills and experience for being competitive in the labor market. It's another thing to be able to talk about it in a way that resonates and is interesting for your prospective employers. So we get that kind of career advice as well, which is really, really fantastic. Um, we have all kinds of professionals come, um, which is which is great. You get a nice diversity of perspectives in terms of um, how did how do I get there? How do I get to working at the UN? Uh, how do I get to um, working in a think tank? Uh, how do I start my own business or my own um, my own think tank, for example, my own organisation? So the career development panel is a real favorite of the Global Scholars and I'm sure it will be just as valuable for those of you who are coming or thinking of coming this summer. 
Um, what else is there to say? We also have some bonus modules that we're thinking of, add, that we're thinking that we are adding this summer, um, that we are going to be adding this summer. So for example, um, how to run for office will be part of our career development module. Um, also, uh, another module that we're adding called career mapping. So how to map out your career in a way that is high impact. So that answers a global challenge of the 21st century, but is also um, that also serves your lifestyle and your needs. So it's financially viable. Um, that is in a place that you, if, if you like to travel, how do you uh, carve out a career for yourself? that it enables you to travel as well. Um, all of these different kinds of things, work-life balance, et cetera, et cetera. So that is part of the career mapping module that we will be adding this summer as well as part of the career development um, kind of piece to our curriculum. Other stuff. We visit international embassies in Washington, D.C. So we go to um, embassies such as in the past past years, we've gone to China, uh, we've gone to Afghanistan, we've gone to Niger, we've gone to Haiti, uh, we've gone to countries in Latin America that I, quite, I can't remember right now. Um, we go all over the world, all within the city of Washington, D.C. Um, but this is where all of the international embassies um, are based. Um, so we go and we'll have maybe we'll have a session um, from a couple of hours to half a day where we'll go and learn about the political, historical, social, cultural, economic profile of the country um, at hand. Um, and it's really fun. Sometimes there are interactive and, and really fun um, activities that you can do, uh, food and drink as well. So trying different kinds of food and drink and cuisine um, from that country. Also meeting with the ambassador and asking direct questions, having a question and answer session with the ambassador. It's um, looking at art, for example. Um, last year, we were uh, we went to the Embassy of Haiti, and it was a fantastic experience. Uh, we um, tried some of some Haitian juice, <laughs> tropical juice, which was lovely, delicious. Um, we also looked at um, the historic, the history of uh, of Haiti as well, and learned some really interesting. Um, some really interesting stuff uh, about Haiti, which is a super, super interesting um, part of the world in terms of um, global history. Um, what else? We did a, um, what was it called? The name escapes me now. Um, but we did a kind of like treasure hunt type activity, which was really, really fun and went down really well with our global scholars. They're super friendly, super approachable, um, and it's great to, to be able to go and look at these beautiful buildings um, and to understand the cultural um, the cultural identity of these countries as well. So we go all over the world, like I said. Um, I would love to share with you the embassies that we're thinking about for this summer. All I will say is this, is that we try and target embassies that, um, or countries um, that have um, a lot of kind of very current and interesting uh, discourse to talk about. So countries that have maybe been in and out of the news quite a lot for different reasons, um, because it's a really great way to understand um, the international system through the lens of a particular social, cultural, economic, etc., phenomenon, okay, that's happening, that's occurring within that country in this moment in time. So um, we have been everywhere, honestly, everywhere in terms of embassies, and it's a great experience. You will probably have cho the choice of two embassies to go to out of four, and you will go in, in, in kind of smaller groups. Um, so there is choice there for you to kind of go to the countries that you think is, are, are most interesting for you as well. We also do, and yep, it's not stopping. We're going to keep going, keep going. <laughs> we also do um, university tours. So we visit Georgetown, George Washington, and the American University, of course. Um, and this is kind of an informal opportunity for you to just go and check out the campuses, as I've mentioned before, um, to go and get a feel of what they have to offer. Um, and it's a, it's a great experience. It's a great way of being able to go and see these very prestigious um, institutions um, that we call colleges and universities in the in Washington DC um, and go and learn a little bit more about you know why you would like to go and study there what is the city like as a whole um, in terms of you know the extracurricular side of being a student having some fun um, 
So it's a really, really great way to kind of understand a little bit more about each campus and faculties, etc. Um, so we do that as well, and that's free of charge. We offer that um, as a as inclusive of our of our program, um, so no worries there. And then we have our day on Capitol Hill, which is a really, really fantastic day. So we visit State Department, we go to Capitol Hill, and we go and serve our senators and representatives. We visit um, different offices, and you will actually go, if you are living within the US, you will actually go and serve your senator and representative with a letter that you have written in the AMP Action Lab, um, about an issue that is that is close to your heart that you feel really strongly and passionately about so you will go and you will you will visit their office we book the appointments for you um so there's no worries there and um eight times out of ten you get to actually go and meet uh with your representative or, or your senator um and find out a bit more about you know what they do on the day to day um, and the ways that you can mobilize and leverage your power as a young voter and which is something that we've seen across the US nation this year as something that's really powerful and important um, and they want to hear from you they want to hear from you they want to know what are the issues that are affecting you and that you feel strongly about and that you are going to vote on um, so it's a great day um, we will give you a bit of training on the to-dos and not to-dos. Um, you will be in smart formal attire as well. So um, definitely bring some of that along. Um, and, um, and the same goes for our panel discussions on our international affairs curriculum as well. You will also be in smart attire. Um, so it's a great day. It's a fantastic day. And anything can happen on Capitol Hill. Last year, there was a trial that was happening on the day that we went um, that was about religious freedoms in Tibet. Um, serious stuff the real deal and some of our global scholars were able to go and to see what a real like tribunal on human rights looks like and to actually attend it with all the press everything it was a fantastic opportunity so um capitol hill is a really really great experience i am yet to to, to be able to go i'm usually stuck back on campus planning um more um exciting stuff about the action lab but i always hear it's a fantastic day and the photos speak for themselves I think last year we end, we um, our global scholars ended up on the Bernie Sanders Snapchat, uh, which was quite funny. <laughs> um, we also met Elizabeth Warren, um, a, you know, a, a whole plethora of, of senators and representatives. So that is also available for you as well to come find your voice and amplify it so that your senators and representatives who are accountable to you um, and who, who serve our citizenry can hear what is affecting you and your community and what can they do about it. So that more or less is, and I say more or less kept cautiously because there is so much that we um, try and fit in, um, that we try and stuff into the <laughs> Global Scholar curriculum, but that is more or less all of the different components that come together to create our curricular program, okay? Um, I'm wondering if I've missed anything. Hopefully not. Um, then we have our extracurriculars, which is some of the fun stuff, which is great. So we do a really, really fun cultural stuff. Um, we're in the city of Washington, D.C., which is great. Um, so we need to make the most of it. You are in the place where everything happens, where change is the only constant. So we really want to ma maximize that opportunity, especially for those of you who are flying across the US or flying across the world. And we do have a really international cohort um, and, and more and more international and diverse every single year. Uh, last year we had um, global scholars coming as far as uh, coming from as far as Ireland, um, also um, Ecuador as well, South Africa. Um, so it really is quite a diverse cohort that you find yourself in, which is great. Um, this year is no different; it's even more diverse than last year. Uh, so we're really, really happy to see that. So to make it worth your while, you are here for either two weeks if you are a junior senior or for just under a week if you are a freshman sophomore. So let's do some fun stuff too. So the kind of stuff that we do, we visit the White House, of course, of course we do. Um, 
we visit Capitol Hill, as I, I mentioned. Um, we also do a night walk of the National Monuments, which is a really, really beautiful occasion. It's really, really breathtaking to see those monuments lit up at night is is, is, a, is a favorite of the Global Scholars. And again, if you want to hear from our alumni of last year, just go to our website, check out that um, check out that YouTube video. You can find it under the tab of A Day in the Life of a Global Scholar. It's all there for you from the horse's mouth um, <laughs> um, about what they loved. And one of the things they loved was the night walk. So we will go um, in the evening and we will kind of slowly walk from monument to monument and it's just beautiful. Um, what else do we do? We, all, we also visit the monuments by day as well. We do that too. Um, so Abraham Lincoln, um, Martin Luther King, um, and, and many more in Washington, DC. Um, so what else? So monuments and memorials we've done. Boat tour. We do a boat tour of the city as well, and that is really, really, really fun. Um, so that if you don't know, Washington DC has a lot of water. Um, so you can get on, hop on a boat and do a, a tour of the city, um, and that's always a really fun occasion. Fourth of July fireworks. So for those of you who are coming during session one, so from the 1st to the 13th of July, if you are a junior and a senior, you have the opportunity to see the 4th of July Independence Day fireworks. It's a great occasion. Um, really, really awesome fireworks. But we also kind of like take um, half a day and just chill out um, in the National Mall. Uh, we get blankets um, and we kind of just make like a group and, and have some fun, play cards, um, just enjoy the day, really. So that's something else that we do. We also visit the JFK Performing Arts and, and Cultural Center, I think it's called. Um, so we'll go and see a cultural performance. The building itself is breathtaking, is beautiful, is absolutely stunning. So I really, really recommend seeing that anyway. But the cultural performances are always really fun too. And then we'll probably like um, kind of have a little talk about that. Like, do they mean by interpreting it a little bit, uh, which is great. And there's also um, a little kind of, there's a big balcony where you can go and take loads of selfies. Um, there's, you can see the water and everybody doing water sports or having a drink or a picnic um, by, by the riverside, uh, which is always really nice. So those are some of the extracurricular activities that we do. Um, and there is always an element of spontaneity. There's always an element of surprise because there are so many cool and interesting things happening in Washington, D.C. So there's always a little part of our program that is not planned. And that when we see things are happening, cool stuff is happening, we're just going to go, which is great as well. Everybody loves a bit of spontaneity. Um, what else is there to say? Yeah, that's really the core of the program in and of itself. I've talked about the international affairs curriculum, so where we go to different organizations and we have our panel discussions and seminars on different global challenges in the 21st century. Fantastic. Um, and then I've talked about the social justice curriculum, which is our AMP action lab where we have different workshops that help you build skills around designing and delivering a social action project that you can take back home great i've talked about um our global citizenship module um our career development module as well which is always a massive favorite with our global scholars visits to international embassies um so china niger haiti afghanistan and and many more countries around the world that we've been to in past years, uh, university tours as well, and our day on Capitol Hill. Not to mention all of the extracurricular stuff that I just mentioned. So there is a lot to fit in, in the time that we have together. Um, then we have some logistics that I can talk about really quickly. So in terms of what a day in the life of a global scholar looks like, you are residing on the American University campus. You will be in dorms. You will most likely be sharing a room with a fellow global scholar, although we do have the option for you to have a private room if you would like. Um, days look like about 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., roughly. Um, you will have breaks throughout the day, so don't worry about that. There's some time to chill. Um, and then in the evening, you have your own, I mean, throughout the day, but in the evening when you can use it the most, uh, you have your own private common room 
in the um, American University residence dorm. You have your own private common room that is just for our global scholars. Um, and there's a TV in there, there's a microwave, there's a sink, there are couches and so, you know, chairs, tables, that kind of thing. And you can make that common room your own, right? So you can decorate it. Um, it's, it's really for you and for your, to have your own space um, and to just kind of unwind and chill there a little bit, play games, uh, card games, watch a documentary with some popcorn, order ice cream, um, which it was a new thing that I learned that you, we could do in the US last year. Certainly not something that we do in the UK, but there we go. Um, so it's really as you wish right? However you wish to use your, your common room, your space, um, which is great. The dorms are, um, are manned 24-7. So there is a member of staff of American University staff um, at the security desk 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So there will never be a time where someone is not available to answer your question if you get locked out, which to be honest, I say barely ever happens, but actually, um, but there will always be someone to give you a new key card, and that's really important as well. The dormitories are only um, accessible uh, with your key card too, so there is a very high level of safety there. You can go back and tell your parents and your grandparents and your aunties and your uncles who are crying when you're when they're waving you away as you leave for the airport um, that that you are safe, you are in good hands, and we as well as members of staff um, are also with you there at, at almost all times. So, um, so yeah, your day will look like about 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, we have breakfast um, in the cafeteria on the American University campus. It's a great cafeteria, one of the best cafeterias I've ever seen. I think, I think cafeterias usually get quite a bad rep, but actually this cafeteria has got loads of food loads of choice there will never be anything um that you that there'll never be there'll never be nothing for you to eat um they've got everything from cereals to waffles and bagels to um uh, to eggs um to scrambled eggs or omelets which was my favorite last year um to uh, muffins cookies the lot they have everything coffee in the morning for those of you who need it orange juice fresh um so it's a, it's yeah you're, you're fine for food trust me you are catered for maybe a little too catered for got to be careful um <laughs> so what else do we have so you have your breakfast we always try and eat together as a global scholar family as well um and then, as I said, we have breaks throughout the day. Um, also, in terms of food, not only will we be eating um, in the American University campus uh, cafeteria, but also we'll be eating at different restaurants um, across the city, and it will be different cultural cuisines, so you get to try different types of food as well. But there's always something for everyone, so don't worry if you're a little fussy, I'm a little fussy too. Um, then we always make sure that there's something that everybody likes, so do not worry about that. Uh, but it's a great opportunity to be able to eat out and have a good excuse to do it. Um, what else? In terms of um, spending money. Um, so, so bringing a bit of pocket money, um, you feel free to bring pocket money, um, not a problem at all if that's something that you want to do, but it is not really necessary. Uh, you do not have to come with loads and loads of money at all. Um, we, all of the food, all of the travel, all of the program costs are included, so you do not have to worry about that, apart from maybe one meal at a push two um, that you pay for yourself when we're out and about in DC. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to order second dinner, um, you know, second dinner, second lunch, um, then then feel free. Um, you are within your right to, to to get more food or drink or, you know, get some dessert. Um, it, that's not a problem at all. You know, midnight snacking. Um, so that is kind of food, drink, sleeping arrangements, um, beginning at about 8 a.m., ending around 8 p.m. on average. Um, in terms of being picked up um, and dropped off at the airport, we will we we are very happy to help with that. That is a that is a choice, that is an option that your parents can select if they would like you to be picked up directly from one of the DC airports. Not a problem. We also pick up from a uh, Union Station as well in Washington, DC. So you're good to go. You're fine. From the minute that you step into DC um, to when you're to, to when you're going back home, you are looked out for. 
So, um, yeah, pickups, not a problem. We help you with your transfers. Um, yeah, I think that's almost about it in terms of logistics. Um, we do provide a reading list. So um, you will get a reading list of um, different materials that we think will be helpful and valuable to your learning. So a bit of preemptive reading so that you have that foundational understanding of the types of subject matter that we are going to cover during the programme. So that will all be included with your welcome pack as well as a gift from us to you. Um, so look out for that. Um, and then recommended things to bring. Again, all I can say is listen to the Global Scholars who have done the program themselves. They can tell you everything that you need to know. So go back to that video on YouTube that I mentioned before on our website and they give you a nice lovely list of things that they think will be really, really useful for you to bring with you. Um, so make sure to do that. And if you do have any questions and you want to hear from our Global Scholar alumni, um, who are also our ambassadors, um, then please get in touch. I will be more than happy to put you in touch with one of our ambassadors um, who are the alumni from last year who did the program, who can kind of give you a bit of a first-hand experience version of, of what you need to know um, about Global Scholar. So I really, I think that's it. Yeah, 45 minutes later, I think, I think we're almost there. Um, just to recap, the Global Scholar is a fantastic opportunity. It is a really great opportunity if you are looking to build skills, but also if you're looking to build your resume, especially for those of you who are beginning to think about applying to college. Global Scholar is a fantastic opportunity to begin to show your interest and passion and your commitment to social change. Um, it is a great um, leadership um, example um, that you can also talk about. And we are with you every step of the way with helping you do that. Uh, we will help you with mentorship and coaching in all things career development, um, both before, during and after the program. And um, so it's a great resume builder. If you're thinking about coming to the American University to study, loads of our, social, uh, our, loads of our Global Scholar cohort um, have been accepted into, into the School of International Studies at the American University um, and other faculties as well. So if that's something that you're particularly interested in, this is again a really good way of showing your interest and commitment in, in the university um, in and of itself. But also, if you are passionate about making change, Global Scholar is a great program. I wish when I was younger, when I was your age, that I had something similar. Um, it is a fantastic way of understanding the, the, the foundation of our international system and the ways that we can make change through our own power as global youth to make this world a more peaceful, sustainable and just place for all so please if that passion is raging inside you if you have seen the power of like youth-led movements across the united states and in other parts of the world then please 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 make your voice heard amplify your power with a program like global scholar myself Karen and the rest of our team are here for you every single step of the way. If you have any questions about applications, about scholarships, about logistics, concerns that you might have, please get in touch anytime. We and myself included are more than happy to answer any questions that you might have um, and also to look at different ways that we can solve any concerns that you or your family or your parents might have. Um, please get in touch. Absolutely, absolutely get in touch. Um, and I think that's about it. Just to say that I cannot wait for Global Scholar 2018. It is one of the best parts of my year. And uh, we will be there waiting. The 1st of July, we will be there waiting to meet you, uh, either at, at the airport or station of your choice, or if you come directly to the American University campus, we will be there welcoming you, ready to begin what will be an intense but really, really inspirational time that we share together, learning about international affairs, social justice and global citizenship. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep up the good work, Global Youth. Let me know if you have any questions, as I said before. And again, looking forward to seeing you for Global Scholar 2018. Have a fantastic day. And yeah, that's a wrap. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye bye.